So as time theory, identifying a dynamic regression model is a kind of an art. So let me illustrate you this with a demo. So let's create a script. And I'm going to import some libraries. FPP2, because it has some interesting plotting tools. I'm, I'm also going to use ggplot to put some splines. TSA is going to help us to do this extended regression in which we have some input which is going to be X and the output is going to be Y. And the final library is going to be LMTest, which is a library that uh, it will allow us actually to, to see if the coefficients are significant. Okay, so let's load them all. And I'm going to load this data set. You can download it from my GitHub account. So be careful because it has a header. And here we go. And now I'm going to plot this so you can see what is going on. This is going to be X, this is going to be Y. So here we go. So here is the data. And as you can see, there is no clear pattern. So actually, if I take a look at this, I would say that you don't see any correlation at all. But I can promise you that there is correlation because I have, uh, this is a mock data set and I created this data set with some uh, correlations and some regression inside. But the problem is that we don't know that. Okay, so the, the first way in which you can see this sort of correlation is to plot the cross correlation function between both variables. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's create a time series from the data. So here, now we have time series. Okay, and you can see this sort of pattern. And clearly you see this peak there, and then you can a kind of decay. Of course, this is inside the dashed blue line, so this could be completely relevant. But this is a criterion to distinguish between noise and information. And um, I would say that despite the fact that this is below the threshold, you can still see the, a kind of pattern there of correlation. And you can see also these co correlations. And actually, this is always positively correlated. So this is a pattern too. So the fact that we don't have anything in the negative part means that there is something connecting Y and X. But it's not trivial. Okay, so we're going to try to build that connection uh, with, with care. So let's plot again the data. The plot data and let's plot them together. Oh, sorry, let's transform this into a time series. You know, the problem with the classes. And here we go. So you can see that Y has a clear pattern. It looks like the SOC market, so probably it has some integration. Remember that integration means a kind of cumul cumulative sum. And this is a kind of random walk, so you can have a continuously moving up and down, but you're following a kind of path. But the X is, it looks, uh, apparently it looks clearly uncorrelated, okay? We can also take a look at both variables independently. So let's plot first Y. And you can see that you have a clear integration. Uh, remember that it, that means that probably if we take the, the derivative of the series, we have something more clear, so let's do that. So you can see that identifying is also exploring the data. And, and I like that because you learn a lot of things about your own data set doing this. Okay, here we go. So now we take the derivative and you can see that we have removed that trend, but we still have some some bars up and down. Probably that means that we have autoregressive part and moving average part in this data set. Let's take a look at X. And here we go. This is completely uncorrelated. So it looked right. So probably this is what was happening. This doesn't mean that this is pure noise. Uncorrelation, uncorrelated means that we don't have any information there. So imagine that you have a data set and, and it's talking about patients with diabetes. Uh, probably the blood sugar is uncorrelated from one patient to the other patient. So if you take a look at the data, it looks like that. So it looks like completely noise, but that doesn't mean that it's noise. It's simply that we have some information and one data point is uncorrelated with the other, but that doesn't mean that this is not important, okay? Okay, let's move on a little bit. And the, the method of identification was very bold, and the idea was start with a very simple model with a lot of regression. So let's start with fit, let's call this, okay, transfer function fit zero, and let's call the function rmyx from the library TS, TSA. This is going to be the output, and I'm going to start with a very simple order. So this is going to be autoregressive in, in the noise term, but we are not going to include any, uh, I would say, integration or any moving average in the residuals, okay? We don't have any seasonal part, and now the transfer, the input, okay, in this case called the transfer, but because of this logic of the transfer function methodology, is going to be x, let's say the order of the transfer connection, uh, this is going to be 0, 
let's say 010 or 08 or 09, whatever, okay, a large number to guarantee that we are putting all the information into those coefficients that in a previous video I called alpha, but basically they are a summary of the omegas and the deltas, okay? Now let's include some drift. So include mean equals true, and if I remember properly the uh, syntax, let's use maximum likelihood as a fitting method. Okay. Oh, sorry, There's something. Yeah, I was missing an S here. Okay. So here we go. Now we have our first fit. Let's take a look at the coefficients. Remember the coef test fun from LM test library, TF fit zero. And here we go. And you can see a couple of interesting things. First of all, the intercept is not relevant, it's not significant. That means that the estimated value is 3 plus minus 20, 20 let's say, twice this value. That's why this is not relevant, because you, it, this could be 3, but it could also be minus 17, let's say. Okay. The other thing is that our first guess was right about the autoregressive part. This is not always that way, but that means that this one is going to be there to stay. And the next interesting thing is that the first coefficient is not uh, significant, and then we have a bunch of coefficients that they are, and then the last one it isn't. Okay, let's plot this. I like to use bar plotting for this sort of stuff. I'm going to use the function coef from the basic R library, from the fit. This works for any fitting, like the, the good old linear regression. If I plot this, you can see these two bars here, but I'm not interested in the other regressive part, so I'm going to remove the first two observations. And to see the, the labels the correctly, I'm going to say last equals 2, the meaning that I'm going to plot the labels vertically. Okay, so here we go. And now comes the tricky part. And the tricky part means that, first of all, I have to take a look at the first significant coefficient. So this, this is not significant, this, this is. So this index 1 is going to be the, the value of b. So now we know the shift, b equals 1. And actually, if you go back to the oral correlation function, you could see that was something there. So th this peak in 1 was a clue that probably 1 is going to be the first significant value. This is not always the case, because we have we are mixing all regressive moving average parts and, and also shifting, but that was a good clue. Okay, let's go back to the plot. Now, to, in order to estimate R, we need to understand the pattern. So there are three patterns. The first pattern is a single bar, and then the next is 0, which is not the case. The second type of pattern actually are an infinite number of patterns, but the three most common ones. The second type of pattern is an exponential decay, and here you could say that's kind of decay, but if you follow that exponential, these bars are missing there. And the, th the third one is a kind of uh, either an exponential, or a sine modulated exponential, would be something like this, or a sine with two length scales. So you can see that we have this sine, sorry, this exponential, and then we have this bump here, and then decays back. So I'm going to say that r equals zero, uh, r equals two, sorry, because this is not a clear exponential, you have this bump here. And now the, the hardest one, which is the s, and, and to understand the s, we have to see, to look at the first, let's say at the topmost bar, so the peak of this exponential decay. And now the, I would say that this is one, and take a look at what is happening before. And before we have this, only this coefficient, and this coefficient is not significant. So in that case, that means that s is equal zero. Okay, so now we have a first improvement of our model. So let's repeat the analysis. And now this is going to be fit 1. And instead of having c uh, 0, 9, I'm going to say 2, 0. I'm going to leave this part. Okay, this is not important. But now I'm going to create a new variable, which is going to be x lag, which is the old variable lag. And actually, I'm going to use a library to do this, which is called quantum mode that controls better for NAs, x a lag b, okay, this is the b. Actually, we can, we can write it, this more explicitly. Okay, and now I'm going to say that whenever you have an NA, I'm going to remove it, okay, because otherwise this, the, the fitting method is not going to work. Okay, so uh, let's change that here, x lag, and run everything. So b equals 1, sorry, load the library, x lag, and now we have the fitting, everything is correct. Let's take a look at the coefficients. And so far so good. So now all the coefficients that we have remaining are correct. Uh, the syntax is really simple. So here we have uh, two autoregressive parts and zero moving average part. That comes from this two and this zero. And then we have the autoregressive part for the noise that comes from this one. Okay, And the intercept comes from this mean 
uh, included in the in the estimation okay we can plot this but it's not going to be uh, truly interesting because all the coefficients are now correct okay so now now we have a better model so let's check the residuals okay so ggt display tf fit one residuals so we can learn a little bit about what's going on there and this is interesting so we still have a couple of three of bars going out there this these bars here are lower but also maybe it could be relevant and also we have uh, some some i would say significant correlations in the or correlation function so we have to do now is try to estimate these coefficients and it looks like it's going to be a high order because we have at least three bars there at least i would say three bars and probably there is some long-term correlations so in this case the order of the of the noise is going to be large so instead of start ex inspecting these correlations i'm going to create uh, a new variable let's call these residuals sorry um, or directly let's call this feed arima noise uh, let's do an uh, auto arima of the residuals uh, let's take a look at that okay let's plot the summary feed arima noise and as I was anticipating, you can see that the order is pretty large. So you have an order regressive order three and a moving average order one. The order regressive part, remember that it's better seen in this partial correlation function. And this is related to the fact that I have at least three bars which are large. So one to three, and maybe some long-term correlations because of the coupling with the moving average part. And on the other hand, we have this long bar in, in the order correlation function. So that means that at least I have order one. And these two bars could be a consequence of mixing both uh, estimations together. So th this looks like a pretty reasonable uh, model for this for this data set, for these residuals. So we'll get into the end of the show. And now let's do a last fit. Uh, let's copy this. Okay. And now this is the, the better model that we can write. So we can put the order here that we have fitted for the residuals. I'm going to remove the, the intercept because all the time we've seen that the intercept is not significant anymore and I'm going to leave the same black and the same R and S in the in the regressive part okay so let's run this let's take a look at the coefficients everything looks fine you can see that now all the coefficients are actually pretty significant that means that if you divide this number by this number it's going to give you the number of sigmas in which this is correct so you can see that you have s almost 60 sigmas of uh, the, the of significance in in this case now let's do some plottings so let's plot e y sorry it's a series this is the data and now let's add some layers so fit it tf fit 2 uh, let's call this simply the final fit okay so let's take a look at that and they are almost indistinguishable. So you can see here that you cannot see the, the, the data because the, the feed is over, overimposed over the data. Actually, if we run this model again, and imagine that you, you prefer a simpler model because you, you, you have a couple of aims, a couple of targets with this sort of analysis. One is explaining the data and the other is predicting the data. If you're going to do uh, some forecastings, it's better that you, you include the highest order that you can hear because that is going to to take, I, I would say, the, the flavor of the data. But if you want to do some simpler explana explanations, a, very, a simpler model to explain would be to put a one here. So let me repeat this. Okay, I'm going to overlap that. And you can see that the feed is uh, slightly worse. You can see that some red parts are emerging from the data, but the, the, the feed is pretty good, okay? So you could compare using AIC or the mean root square error some, or any, any metric that you want, okay? Okay, so this is the end of the video. Now let me show you just as, I don't know, if you want to compare not only visually but also compare the, the, the actual outcome. So let's create a data frame in where we're going to put the data. So X is going to be the fitted data according to this model. And the Y is going to be it's called the capital Y, so I, ha I don't have to rewrite that anymore. This is going to be the real data. And here we go. So this is, looks like a straight line. If you want to, to put also a linear regression on top of that, you can see that this is pretty uh, straight. Okay, so now, if you remember from the, from the beginning, 
we have a very messy data it, it didn't look like this was correlated so if you take a look at this data this looks absolutely crazy but now we've seen that after inspecting a little bit part of the confusion that we have from the beginning actually i think a better plot was was this okay uh, part of the confusion came as i was saying from the correlations in the noise that can be important like i showed in the previous video but in this case the the, the starting lag that is going to be one and also there is this uh, regressive part in the y okay and that's all so it's a long video and but it, i think it's full of nuggets so you can watch it over and over again and until you repeat this simulation so you can download the code i'm going to put that that code in the description and remember this idea when we are playing with time series uh, don't, don't get at this sort of plot so play a little bit with correlations because that could be important.